Sometime in the long ago past, I got hold of a library book that must have been a version of Fox's Book of Martyrs for Children. There was a black and white drawing of Archbishop Thomas Cranmer at the stake in 1556, the hand that had signed his recantation extended in front of him into the flames. I was in primary school in those days and the image impressed and inspired me. Later on, doing a BA, I got to look at this part of our history in more depth. I went in as a fan and a committed Anglican and I came out much the same way, but there were things about Cranmer's career and history that I found uncomfortable and unsettling. It was a shock for me to learn that Cranmer, as the first Anglican Archbishop of Canterbury, authorised other people to be executed by being burnt at the stake, particularly, and perhaps surprisingly for us, other Protestants, whose views were more radical than his own. I was uneasy about the inconsistency of Cranmer interceding for Anne Boleyn, Henry VIII's second wife, but being at the centre of the effort to set aside Catherine, Henry's first wife and original queen. Later, I suspected Cranmer as a careerist, someone likely to be influenced by the approval and notice of the king and other establishment figures like Thomas Cromwell. While I sympathised with Cranmer's desire to bring reform and change to the church, breaking the authority of Rome, I could not agree with his conviction that as a priest, his first duty was to the king, especially a king with a character like Henry VIII. But here's the thing I know. If you're in bishop's orders, all of your decisions will be scrutinised and more than the usual number of people will have an opinion about everything you do. If you're an archbishop, multiply that by about five. If you're Archbishop of Canterbury, the most senior bishop in the English church, multiply again. Once you're the first Anglican ever to hold the position, the people of your own tradition will spend almost 500 years wanting to put you on a heroic pedestal and being disappointed if you, they ever suspect you of falling short of their ideals. Cranmer championed what we take for theological truth. That we're justified, put right by God, by faith in God's grace. It is not our deeds that qualify us for salvation, but our belief in the power of Christ to save us by the sacrifice of himself. Archbishop Cranmer's sins have been atoned for in the same way that ours have. He has been saved by his faith in the one he proclaimed, and by no other means. If we understand our own sins as having been cancelled in this way, we only believe this because Cranmer and other reformers developed this doctrine for us. If we read the Bible in our own language, this is because Cranmer with others pushed for a translation of the Bible from Latin into the language of the people. Every time we use the prayer book, we engage with Cranmer's most outstanding achievement. The Book of Common Prayer and our local editions of 1978 and 1995, an Australian prayer book and a prayer book for Australia, reflect Cranmer's unrivaled gift of liturgy. The church historian Dermot McCulloch understands the Book of Common Prayer as one of the most important texts in the English language, a book that was instrumental in deciding what good English should sound like. For this, McCulloch writes, Cranmer deserves the gratitude of all English speakers throughout the world. Today we give thanks for Cranmer's theology and liturgy as we remember him on the day he was executed. By the time the reforms that Cranmer bought were reversed by Henry VIII's daughter Mary, Cranmer was in his mid-sixties, which was old for the time. With a change of regime, he must have known his own future was bleak. He was arrested and imprisoned in the Tower for more than two years. He was forced to watch some of his closest collaborators suffer horribly, including Bishops Latimer and Ridley. Old, unwell, isolated and worn down, he made a series of humiliating public recantations 
of his former doctrinal views and allegiances. If he thought he might be spared execution, he was wrong. Queen Mary insisted that he be burnt at the stake anyway. Paraded in the pulpit of the University Church in Oxford, Cranmer abruptly refuted his early penitential statements and insisted that his original views were the correct ones. Outside at the stake, he extended the right hand that had signed the paper into the fire first, never seeming to flinch and uttering as his final words a biblical quotation, the dying words of the martyr Stephen. The last scene that Cranmer left to the world was one of outstanding, jaw-dropping bravery. He set a standard for Anglican toughness and truth-telling that has inspired people for almost 500 years since. Today we honour him, we thank God for him, we deal with the complexities of his character and we take hold of all the good of his example. The Lord be with you.